to motivate, inspire. Sometimes I think you, now you have been a great mentor to me. I, I, I say, I, 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 we go back and forth, but honestly and truthfully, great job with your presentation, but you have mentored me years ago. Now when it first started, I said, what's this guy doing? Who do you think he is? Who does he think I am? <laughs> but I had to grow as a black man, understanding a young man who grew up in the uh, sand dunes of T Tar Heel State. Out there South Carolina. Back. No, 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 Tar Heel. South Carolina. That's well, you're the, in the shadow yeah. of Tar Heel, so it's Tar Heel spilled <laughs> over on you. It's South Carolina, North Carolina. But we've learned to, to recognize, I, I see Ed Barker like this now, as opposed to somebody else saying, what's this guy doing? Who's he think he is? Or why are you listening to him like that? Why are you doing that? You and I, working with Ed, uh, growing. And so, basic intent, I would make an assumption about pretty much everyone I've been associated in first. Georgia First, Connie, you've done an excellent job of having me feel like I belong. I'm included. Uh, and I, I feel that way. It's mine. And having our children feel that way, I, I salute Vivian and the evolution of girls can in our community. Girls can. An all-girls team evolving out of a community where boys take the drill, oh, you can't do that, you're, you're a girl. So we're still learning things about male-female, but then there's the black-white thing, and sometimes there are some situations where, personally, I've had to turn around and look at things from a different perspective. He's just got his own, this is the way he was raised. This is what he's been taught. Now, I can show him something different if he'll work with me, but by the same token, Asians, Caucasians uh, have to, you don't have to, but I wish there was a, a, a growing understanding that we're, we're doing some things together in cultural situations that are maybe not common to us. No, not maybe. They're definitely not common to us. And when you say things, oh, I was just playing. No, sometimes you're not playing. And when, you, when, when a child tells you that uh, he's not playing and you should understand. It might take two or three times for you to hear it. He's not, he's not accepting that as playful. This. It, it, it can be, it may not intend, intentionally be harassment, but it will border into infringement upon someone's uh, ability and right to be here. And some of the things that we're doing, I, I really believe we got the brains to well, to, let me to gear, gear in a different way and look at things before they get out of hand. And it's, uh, for, I was, now I'll just be short, was over there in St. Louis and asked to be a part of a diversity forum this year at the first world championship. First of all, I don't want to do these kind of conversations, but I do know from personal experience that there are realities sometimes right in the same room with you and you don't realize it's going on. So respectfully. Let's the reality that we're male, female, we're black, white, we're Asian, we're Caucasian, we're Hispanic, we're growing, and we got to grow individually. I'm putting the burden on Bart. Bart has to grow. So respectfully, gang, Ed, I thank you for growing. <laughs> and growing with me now. You're welcome. I'd like to offer a broad piece of guidance. Just some, you've, you've touched on a lot of stuff here. We've talked about FIRST being a proxy for a student's first job in a professional workplace. Think, think of this is the job they go to. It's like working at a large major corporation. You go there, you respect one another. You don't, there's, there's restraints on how you treat your fellow employees. There's harassment issues that exist in the workplace that you know, we teach them, this is, these are the things that you don't do. It's not permissible, it's not allowable, it's not good character, and we don't allow this here. We enforce safety rules, this is physical safety, this is um, harassment safety, everything else. You're expected to, to conduct yourself in a more professional way because we're helping you to learn. This is your first job. We're kind of like pseudo parents to them trying to raise them up. We're also giving them their first job and they need to learn how to work in the workplace. That makes them employable, that will make them successful, it makes us all successful. I, I was going to kind of feed off that, and this is a question to the group um, with the diversity. We, we're very fortunate in that we're in a very diverse population, so we have students.
students that are that are Indian, that are Asian, that are African American. I mean, we have a very diverse team that, that we're just we're very blessed and, and excited to have. Um, the one area that we have problem when we have applications with though is that female component. So you know, it's it's how do you get girls? Because we know that the interest's out there, but I think sometimes there's this idea of well, robotics. I how do you get girls engaged with that so that you we can get more of those girl applicants? Because our applications are so seriously heavy on the male side and light on the female side. Okay, let's go over here for a minute. Let's go down to the end. We're going to chase this answer right over here. So, how did you join this team? You you went in with soft skills. My brother was on the team the first year that it was there. It was his senior year, my sophomore year. Again, I thought it was nerdy. I didn't want to join. I didn't want to be a nerd. But I went, we had a scrimmage at our high school after the season. And the energy that just radiated. I heard somebody say it's like a sporting event that you see it on TV. And you don't know it until you experience it. So the best thing you can do, again, is show how awesome this is and what remember what I said I got roped in because the soft skills side you know try going after it from that perspective and then they get exposed to the science this application of the sciences I was always higher level math higher level science than my grade group so I had I had that aptitude it just I never knew how to um, release it or find it I didn't have a way to release that uh It was the fun. That, that was after the season. So like right now would be a perfect time. And the other thing is, um, I just read an article recently about the way, it's about Girls Who Code, the program that's going out in California. There was a young lady on there that said, I didn't know that I could do this because I'd never seen anybody like me that was doing this. You need a female mentor. You need a female technologist on the team that really is going to start opening the eyes. I have a female GE mentor, actually. So. Good. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the mentor that we had on our team that was running our team, she was a uh, manufacturing engineer when I was in high school. She's amazing. I, I, I loved her. I thought, oh my gosh, I love that she's extroverted. She's not your typical, everything that I've been exposed to as a typical engineer. You can, I'm like, oh my gosh, you can actually be fun and cool and be engineering. You know, th I mean, you just you have to help connect the dots in a visual form for the younger girls. Mm -hmm. The um, if you're to ask an ed if you're pose this question to an educator, they might want to sign you up for a robotics class. But what you had was the opportunity, like the fractional distillation of petroleum. You had an opportunity to just sort of walk in, float around, and try different things out and very informally without any stress and say, yeah, I'm in. And the key is getting rid of those comments that the high school boys may have um, in creating a, that safe space. And te like you mentioned, teaching them that's not acceptable. Um, the generation that's going through high school now is much better about it in such that we're having to teach the women coming into the workforce to have a thicker skin because you, as it was mentioned earlier, it's the older mentors that may be making the comments too. So we have to be cognizant of those comments as well. Yeah, I like the comment you just made about safe space. It needs to be safe in all respects as to how we treat each other. And that's demanded in a professional workplace. It's just not, to anything else is just not tolerated. I just want to mention um, on October 18th at the Kennesaw, the Walton D, uh, DE, we're hosting a girls first event and it'll consist of a scrimmage in the morning and the girls will run the field, run the robots, and no guys allowed in the place. So um, it's an opportunity for girls who might be a little hesitant to actually get behind the robot or think they can drive to actually get out there and do it and not worry about the guys laughing at them. Um, we're also going to have some female, some success stories. Uh, women in technology come and talk to the girls and then another thing that we're going to do at the end of the day is distribute sort of an outreach in a box we're putting together an outreach program targeting other girls so that the teams that come can take with them an outreach project that they can then start in their own communities targeting girls free of charge we'll send out information through Connie but it would be a great way if you're trying to get some girls um, to feel a little more confident 
come join us. And where do you find out information about that event? <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a date yet? Uh, what was the date on this? October 18th. October 18th. Okay. Uh, you, you went first? So uh, I also do Bot Ball, which is another robotics team stuff. And with that, there's actually two different robots. So what I do is I make a guy team and a girl team. Although competition is bad, sometimes it's good. Because the girl team gets really energetic. So I did that last year, and all of a sudden, I got all these extra girls. Their friends were bringing their friends because they want to compete against the guys. Because that's just healthy competition. <laughs> so then what's nice about the bot ball is then, once they both had, they each have a different robot, then it was like, okay, now you guys have to work together to accomplish and get a better score. Because they each, there's different tasks or whatnot. So then they had to work together. And then when I went to the first, because that was uh, early on, when I went to first, all of a sudden, they were working together as a team. And they, all of a sudden, I had more girls on the team because they found out that they could play against the guys and compete with them, and now they're interested because they were successful because they actually beat the guys. Because well, very cool. Or not, guys in high school are terrible at coming to a simple like solution. They're bouncing around. <laughs> around. I want to beat the guys. And that's their focus. So Megan, what you got? If you're looking for female engineers in your area, go to Society of Women Engineers <coughs> or uh, Women in Engineering. Both of those two groups have fantastic women. Yeah. And I think when it comes to talking about diversity and discrimination, what you have to do is treat all of your students with respect. Don't take any kind of tolerance to any kind of comments that anybody is making. Just let them know it's not okay in your shop. And really, if people are hanging back because they don't feel included, put the tool in their hand. Just get them involved. That's the way you keep them. Yes. SWE, Society of Women Engineers. And women engineering, uh, W I E. Yes. And um, women in technology, which is a huge partner with FIRST here in Georgia. But like I said, if you want a context for any of those, we have them. So just send me an email, and I'll get. And they're very. They want to come to talk to your team. They want to come and talk to girls and do female events for engineers at your schools and in your organizations. So let us know if you're interested. We have a comment here. We're starting a girls team specifically for that reason. Last year was our first year, and the boys were just more assertive than the girls. And now we say girls will have their own team. They don't have to put Some, up with the boys. Sometimes you have to intercede in as a mentor and make sure that everybody has a fair share of the uh, work. But I do have Because the boys sometimes will push the girls out the way. Yeah, about, well, we were brand new, so. Um, one, we had girls on our team. We had a very diverse team. Um, we had had two girls on our team last year, and during a judging session, <coughs> they were asked if they were the cheerleaders. So I just want to Ooh. Not yeah, yeah, just pass that along. Wow. Good messaging to know. All right. Uh, so just actually following up on uh, on that, in terms of you know, I found working with uh, the teams, the the boys do tend to push the girls out. So it's all about accessibility. When you get, you know, over my years doing this. I think we've always had a good number of girls that show up to the first meeting, you know, and maybe, maybe even the second one, but then after that, you, uh, you know, you end up losing them if you don't, one, give them a quick success. And I think this, this is not just girls, this is, you know, students in general, but particularly the girls, give a quick success in terms of, I can do this. So if they, you know, if there's something that you're building, uh, maybe an initial project, um, the, you know, I as a mentor and the other mentors actually intercede and make sure that if there are multiple parts of the project, the guys are not taking all the parts that, no, uh, here, you're going to have this part, you're going to have this part. They can build it, they can complete it, they can see it work. And, you know, from there on, you know, you, you have a lot more retention. One more comment and we, I got a subject I want to move to. So, yes. We, uh, and partly to his point and to your point as well, we, last season we had two girls, now we're up to five girls and four guys, and they all, a lot of that was them friends, mm -hmm. finding friends and getting to know people. And um, engagement, I mean, all of them are gonna be STEM. You know, one's our pro new programmer, one's gonna be our new driver, one's gonna be our new CAD person. And getting them engaged and like, quickly finding out what they wanna do and showing them, okay, this is what's there and this is what that is. Social networking, Social networking. letting girls see other girls, and young women in, in engineering roles is very important to female recruitment, allowing them to test the waters without having them sign up for a course and make a commitment. 
these are all critical components of uh, recruitment for 